Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to do a thermocouple bypass test when you get a fail message, like we're getting right now. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to need to remove the controller from the kiln so that we can access the thermocouple. So first you do want to power your kiln off so that there's no electricity going to it. And then you're going to remove the four screws from the corners of the controller so that we can pull it away from the control box to look at the back. So let's go ahead and do that first. Okay, so now that we've got the controller removed from the control box, we want to go ahead and remove the thermocouple. So we're going to go ahead and loosen these screws. And then you should just be able to pull the thermocouple off. Okay, and now that that is done, we want to go ahead and use a jumper. You can use a wire, or what we found is the easiest is just to use a paper clip that's been broken in half. Go ahead and slide that in between the two so that you're jumping the positive and negative for the thermocouple. And it should look like that. And then you're ready to go ahead and do the thermocouple bypass test. So now we want to go back to the front of the controller and power it on. Okay, so now that we've got our jumper put on the back, uh, we want to go ahead and return power to the kiln and check our temperature. So we went ahead and gave it power. And now we want to check to see if our temperature is reading about a room temperature, which it is. Um, that's good. That just means that the thermocouple has gone bad and that it needs to be replaced. If it reads an abnormally high temperature, that means that there is a problem with the controller itself and it will actually need to be sent in to re be repaired. So that's it for this one, but remember to like us on Facebook, sign up for our e-newsletter, or check our website for more information and tips. Thanks!